Hi, everyone, and thank you for being here. We're going to present today one of our products for managing LiDAR data that we've developed in the past uh, four years or so. Uh, my name is Bogdan. We come from Denmark for a company called ID34, where we do a lot of geospatial software development. Yep, and I'm Lasse, same company, um, actually doing an industrial postdoc. Uh, so I'm a bit the odd, odd one here in the company, uh, also half researcher. So what is point view and why point view? Um, around 2019, 2018 even, we started producing a lot of data. We have access through our sister company, the biggest surveying company in Denmark, to a lot of instruments and a lot of data. So we have mobile mapping data, for example, that for one single project can get up to 500, 600 gigabytes of, uh, of data. We're creating this data for our customers, but our customers were not able to see the data, to use it, and we could not just deliver one single file. Um, so we started uh, creating a, a web viewer that can help our customer actually work with the data. Point view has three main components, which is the, the actual point view viewer that uh, we can work with the data. It is based on, on poetry format. Then we have a, something called a dashboard, which allows the user to, to manage data, to upload data, to yeah, keep documentation on data. And then we have Smart Survey, which is a, an app that allows the user to record uh, videos that are later turned into uh, point clouds. We'll talk first about uh, the actual viewer. It starts uh, something like this. We have a 2D map. Uh, at the moment, it's based on Mapbox, where we have all the geometries of all the point clouds that we have in the system. If you zoom a bit more in, you can see closely the, the geometries. And then you can click on the geometries and, and see the point clouds. Here are point clouds from uh, multiple sources. We have some drone, uh, point clouds from drone data. And then we have some mobile mapping and some bathymetry also. You can see it here. The, the bridge was scanned with uh, some mobile mapping system. And then you have under the water from there, and then the drone data. So you can open all of them in the same viewer, and you can work with the data. Another view here of how it looks. A lot of our customers are using a lot of solutions to capture data, and they wanted to see them all together. And in this case, it's all georeferenced in the same uh, coordinate system and uh, presented together. Of course, it's based on Pottery, so you have all the tools available in, in Pottery, and that is uh, uh, 2D profiles, measurements, annotations, and, uh, and so on. We can upload data from many types of instruments based on what type of instrument you use and what type of data you use. You can create a type of project in point view that has a different view. Um, in the top corner left, you have a mobile mapping data. We have our own mobile mapping system. So we can add the, the point cloud data and then the images on top. Um, on the right side, we are accepting data from Navis, all types VLX and M6, or how it's called, yeah. Um, and we have our own viewer for the data. We're creating all the mini maps and, uh, and the indoor uh, viewer uh, experience in the browser. Then we have uh, drone data here, where you can also see the, the camera locations and the point cloud. Then we have, on the right side, there's point clouds that came from uh, the mobile phone, from the videos we were taking with the Smart Survey app. Uh, bathymetry data, this corner, and then normal uh, scanners on the right there. Data administration happens in something called dashboard, where you can just create uh, something called a project, which is a container for, uh, for data. You click on the on a project, you can see what you have. You have videos, you might have point clouds, images, ground control points that can be used uh, directly here to georeference data. If you have, uh, for example, images, you can upload images, upload some ground control points, and then pick the points in order to, to do the georeferencing. 
That means you can do the whole also for the ground through workflow here and you don't have to leave the browser. I think this is some drone flying with 600 images and one point cloud. Yeah. Uh, we have an interface for uploading all these types of data. As you see there, uh, from top is the uh, Navis um, VLX, then normal scanners, bathymetry, mobile mapping, uh, drone, and then our app. Um, we try to make it as easy as possible so someone who has drone data can just see these are the images. It's going to take the metadata, use that metadata for georeferencing, and just get the point cloud or the photo, the amount. Smart Survey, it's another component of the system. It's a, an app we have developed a few uh, years ago that just takes videos and then we are processing the videos to a point cloud. We have uh, added also the possibility to use a, a, a external GPS that can take RTK connection, uh, corrections. In the image here we have a, a Trimble uh, GPS but we have just added the support for other uh, GPSs as long as you have access to an R uh, RTK correction service. So we are not limited to one uh, single brand or anything like that. Basically you use the app and the holder and you, you take a, a video of the scene. In this case we are in Denmark we are using it a lot for uh, trenches where we have pipes for documentation. We have companies that are making thousands and thousands of videos for documentation. You can see it here. This one was created with uh, our Smart Survey app. You can see the location on the map, on the 2D map, and then the point cloud on the, on the right. Um, then you can inspect. You can see where the images they were taken from the video are located. And then you can also see the images themselves. Here you have the, the point cloud on one side and then the actual image on the, on the other side. So it's a very good way to document the, the work. 2D profiles, again, and measurements. Um, because it's, yeah, Pottery has the possibility to uh, add um, sources of DXF mostly and, and, and GeoJSON and then represent it in 3D. So you can draw new, for example, in this case, pipes, and then you can add some data and you can uh, correct existing data or uh, you can draw new data. Integration with other GIS platforms, a lot of our customers have their own QGIS setup, for example, so we offer the data just as a, as, a, as a VFS. In the VFS, if you do an info, you'll get a link, and then you could open the point cloud and work further uh, from there. We also create uh, orthophotos and DMs from the point cloud, so we also publish them as, uh, as raster data through GeoServer that can be available in the in QGIS, for example. A bit of uh, system architecture. For the front end, we are using Vue.js, Pottery, Mapbox as a, a background map, and also open layers for working with the, the ground control points. We take the images as lo uh, rasters in local coordinate system, and then we can draw the points. Points are saved in the no Postgres database. So it's, we made a viewer from the uh, open layer uh, viewer. Backends are a mix of Node and, uh, and .NET. We are moving to .NET now after the .NET 6 became a lot more stable. Um, all of the data is saved in Postgres with PostGIS, of course, and then all the physical data, it's, in, it's on, on, uh, on premise. Most of our customers would like the data on premise and not on any cloud uh, somewhere. So it's all the data that's with us in Denmark, and that's a big plus for our customers. There's a lot of laws. <laughs> um, yeah, and then integration with other services, we are using uh, GeoServer for all the VMS, VMTS, uh, uh, XYZ tiles, and then <laughs> VFS. Uh, for uploading the data, we use the dashboard as an entry point where someone can choose what data to, to upload. And then we have developed something in-house called GeoProcessor, um, that does all the hard work. GeoProcessor, I'm going to talk about it in the next slide. It's a job management system that we have developed where we can build pipelines 
made out of modules if modules do something. We have a PDL module that can take a pipeline definition and it can do some work. We also have dedicated PDL modules for the filter. So our colleagues that are uh, building the pipeline, so one can just write a, a nice definition and then we have already the infrastructure to, to run it. It can run on different nodes. It can, it has all the possibilities of a job managing system. We are hoping to open source it uh, in the next year. We just need to fix some bugs before it. Um, here are some types of pipelines, module that uh, we say upload a, a last file. Right? Basically, we do a last repair. We convert it uh, to pottery tiles, and then we put it on our servers. Um, or we crop a floor. When we make uh, floors for indoor mapping, we crop a floor with uh, with PDL. Then we generate a, a TIFF and Orthofot, also PDL and uh, GDAL, and make MB tiles, and they are published on the server. And we have a lot of these pipelines for all of our data. Uh, workflows. Last, I will now talk about the newest addition to, to our product and what he has been working for the past one, one year, one and a half years. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, and then I want to talk a bit, as I said, I was, I'm actually an a, a industrial postdoc researcher, so I'm, I'm, I'm part of this uh, research project do with IT34 where we where I investigate uh, deep learning and more specific 3D, 3D deep learning on point clouds and um, I just wanted to show you some uh, initial results of what we got and uh, this is also something we plan to integrate into to point view as a, as a module. Um, so it's uh, it's supervised uh, deep learning, and, and the goal is to do like classification. So, so we need a, a we need some 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 data, uh, annotated data to, to train it on. And and what I've been working on is that we have a lot of these point clouds of open trends utilities, and we we made yeah or my student workers helped me, but <laughs> his criteria is to do this self, but uh, split it into three classes terrain, excavation trends, and utilities um, and then uh, I used uh, something called uh, point next it's a it's a deep learning um, architecture that is uh, it's also on a, on, on github uh, um, and what's really nice with this point next project is it has focused a lot on the training strategies. So, so one thing is we now have 300 point clouds, but, but um, there are some tricks we can do with the data augmentations. It's basically, you know, augmented it, augmented it in different ways, scaling it, rotating and stuff like that. And then you actually create more data uh, out of the same point cloud. So, um, a, a factor of, of 30. Uh, so, so, so it's, instead of only having 300 uh, point clouds, it's actually more of uh, 9,000 uh, point clouds. I have we are training on. Um, so, and the pipe, uh, the, the pipeline is like in this case. I also use uh, PDAL for all the initial processing, do some noise uh, outlier removal, and. Um, uh, after that, I I, uh, I, uh, I integrate into the point next project, and then also uses uh, PDL and, and LastPy again to to like uh, convert it back to um, to um, to uh, to a last file. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's let's have a look at some of the results. I just wanted to show you. So, these areas, area one and two, these are like um, uh, all these markings is of. Um, Open trends uh, point clouds, and um, uh, I had the test area here relatively close to like the training data, so it shares a lot of similarities. Um, but uh, I think just with like these uh, 300 uh, point clouds uh, we had annotated, we actually got some pretty good uh, results. We have you can see this is the input, and this is the predictions. So. Um, yeah, one of the things that, that took a bit of time for the, uh, there was a bit of a struggle in the beginning was these supporting beams here made of wood. They actually thought it was, uh, thought it was a pipe, but uh, initially as, as it had more, we were closing into the 300 point clouds, it, it got better better at, at, at distinguishing between these, uh, these features. Um, 
also just here uh, another example and yeah uh, actually some some pretty satisfying results um, and just a, a closer look here um, so but yeah okay this is nice right so this is just only is it is it just so good all the time well there was of course also some struggle so we were also thinking like okay what happens then if we try, try it on some other types of utility trenches because even though it's a trench it's actually quite distinguished if it's like water utility trench or district heating and stuff um, so this is an example of a district heating trench and here is the, the ground roof uh, like so we annotated it uh, for, for a test data set and right out of the back just only using the base model which was trained of a lot of these you know more smaller trenches with a lot of uh, water utilities it didn't it wasn't you know that good it, it actually had a lot of struggle recognizing the pipes probably probably because it looked a lot different but what we learned also was that now that we have the base model just adding so here we actually just added 21 more point clouds in the training data set from these type of district heating and it actually improved a lot um, so this is actually also um, pretty cool uh, we think um, yeah so that was just uh, some results um, and now I just wanted to show uh, you know what could we then use it for there's of course some some uh, low hanging fruits just like you have the you have the you have your point cloud classifiers and you can now then you know go into your classifications and you can turn off your your layers uh, so turn off the terrain and turn off the excavation box and only having um, the pipes left and this is especially useful uh, for for clients because they are like you know trying to and like digitalizing we call it but but basically do vector lines on top of the pipes so they can like put it into that GS database um, yeah um, and then also some hopefully possible future application we hope to also like maybe could we then automatically connect the lines so to do some kind of automatic uh, utility network completions that is uh, the next step we will uh, try to look into um, where so so basically trying to automate some of the some of the manual workflows that that we are helping our clients with um, yeah and this is this is more like a, a future vision of um, and like really could we this is just a concept but 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 could we really also maybe try to validate existing utility data and, and see if, uh, okay, we actually have some uh, pipes here that detect this, but there's no pipe here. But, but it also where there are some um, uh, telecom uh, pipes here, the green ones, where we don't have uh, depth information on them. But, but now that we see a match in the top view, we could, we could try to upgrade the uh, utility uh, or like give them also some some high elevation um, yeah so that's that's some hopefully some interesting challenge and, and application we will look look more into yeah I think that's it the only thing just would mention is that also the data set we also I am planning to also um, write that into a, 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 a paper where it also will be available uh, for you if you're interested in these point clouds so yeah, uh, probably be on Kaggle or something like that. But um, yeah, look out for IT34. We'll probably link to to that or or follow me or yeah, contact me. Yes, that was it.